Yo, people. Um, so I wanted to make this video based off a video I previously did. Um, and uh, my video that I previously did was all about um, having your toners last longer. But while I was in this headspace of toning, I thought about something that I do all the time that I feel like I should share with you. So when it comes to coloring hair, whether we're toning, you know, doing a full on, you know, global application, if you call it that, um, the thing that I think a lot of hairdressers forget about is one thing. So when we go do a color consultation, we look at things like hair texture, previous hair history, is there color on the hair or not? Um, maybe they'll look at the diameter of the hair. Is it, is it fine like mine or is it uh, very coarse like a, like a guitar string, you know? Um, and so we look at all these factors um, and, you know, how many levels of lift we're going to get and da 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 And there's a lot to remember when you do... Um, hair color. The one thing that I think so many stylists forget, and it's something I bring up all the time, is dealing with porosity in the hair. So uh, what that means, if you don't know what porosity is, is it means how much, um, how absorbent the hair is, okay? Um, porous, porous hair will absorb water, um, it'll absorb color, it'll absorb almost everything. Um, it's a thirsty thing. So when it comes to hair color, here is what happens when you color the hair that is porous. And color companies like Wella has kind of helped you out here by their um, ingredients that they've used in their color, um, like lipids and things like keratin and shine guard and all this good, good, good stuff. But when you're dealing with porous hair and hair color, this is the things that happen, okay? You've got hair color that uh, will, por sorry, porous hair will take in color quicker. Okay, so we know with something being porous, more absorbent, sponge-like, that it's going to take the hair color and it's going to suck it up faster and it's going to um, um, suck it up more. So um, you just need to understand that when you deal with um, uh, coloring the hair. So um, there's that. And then the other thing with porous hair is not only does it take it in faster, is it also lets go of it faster, which is the thing we need to know about at number two. And these are just a couple examples. So we know that porous hair is going to suck up that dye a lot quicker, but it's also going to fade out of the hair a lot quicker. This is just something that we have to deal with a stylus with porous hair. The one thing that I think everyone forgets about porous hair is this final step, and it's the one down here. Not only does it grab color quicker, but it grabs the off-tone quicker, okay? So what I mean by the off-tone, okay? Most, I guess in this day and age, this doesn't really apply, but typically when you're coloring someone's hair, you're not usually going for something like green or blue or purple or gray. But if you are going for those colors, you're typically not gonna be using something like traditional hair color. You'll probably be using a direct dye. So this applies to when you're like toning or you're maybe doing a tint back from someone going from blonde to dark. Um, you have to remember these things um, about porous hair. So because we know that the hair is porous, um, if it is, we know that we can adjust that and tweak that. So that could be slightly less developing time. You can add like clear, but my personal trick is um, adding warmth to your formula. So here's a perfect example. Say I've got my double process blonde, okay? I've been doing her hair for a while and she comes in for her root retouch and the rest of this hair is now already pre-lightened to a level nine or 10. And I go through and do my bleach retouch, let it process until it matches. Hopefully it's all the same. And I go to do my toning formula. If I just go slap, say, a level 10 violet on there, what I'm going to get, because even though, yes, we just bleached the scalp, this scalp hair is still stronger than the hair that's bleached out on the ends of the hair because this hair is pre-lined and it's older. And so because of those factors, I know that this is more porous. So if I go through in this situation and apply a level 10 violet on my even canvas of you know, levels 9, 10 to 9, 10, this is gonna grab cooler than this because this hair is more porous than this. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so what I do a lot of times when I'm using my level 10 violets on my, um, you know, platinum blondes or my icy blondes is I'll add a little bit of level 10 gold to it. And what you get is it almost, I, this is a way to describe it that makes sense to the most people. Think about it as you're slowing down your toner, right? You're making it not as intense um, it's still going to be controlling your underlying pigment that you're toning, but it's not going to be as um, like chaotic and having that, you know, you almost get like banding issues that way. Another thing you can do is if you don't want to add um, 
gold to your formula in this scenario is you can apply the toner at the roots first, like a tint touch up, let it develop, you know, like I keep saying, develop half the time, and then run it through the ends for the last, you know, maybe 10 minutes or five minutes, depending on how much that ends really needs. So again, to reiterate, porosity is going to be something that is going to take in color quicker, let go of color quicker, but most importantly, it's going to grab the off tone a lot faster. So again, recommendation here is to add warmth to your formula. So I hope this helps. I hope that it gives you light and <laughs> all that great stuff. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe. If you have questions, please ask them. And um, if you want to know about some other tips and tricks from me, I'll try to think of as many as I can, but questions help. So I will see you all soon.